Blessed is our God, always now and ever, and unto the ages of the ages. Amen.
Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Thank uh-huh. you. 
power and the glory of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages. This is just a decoration. Yeah. Oh God, cleanse the sinners. Oh God, cleanse the sinners. Oh God, cleanse the sinners of every sins. Oh Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, whatever we are present, fill us all things, treasury of good things, and giver of life. Come and dwell in us and cleanse us of all our and save our souls of the world. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill among men. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill among men. Thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. It is time for the Lord to act. Bless us. Blessed is our God always, now and ever, and through the ages of ages. Pray for us. May the Lord direct your steps. Remember us. May those that remember you in his kingdom always, now and ever, and through the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Peace 
from above and for the salvation of our souls, and let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the good estate of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy temple, and for them that with faith, reverence, and the fear of God and every wren, let us pray to the Lord. Our great Lord and Father Kirill, the most holy patriarch of Moscow and all Russia, and for our Lord, the very most reverend, Metropolitan Malarion, first hierarch of the Russian Church abroad, for the venerable priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. For this land, its authorities and armed forces, and for all who with faith and piety dwell therein, and for the God-preserved Russian land and its Orthodox people, both in the homeland and in the diaspora, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. That he may deliver his people from enemies, visible and invisible, and confirm in us oneness of mind, brotherly love and piety, let us pray to the Lord. For this city, for every city and country, and for the faithful who dwell therein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For seasonable weather, abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For travelers by sea, land, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the imprisoned, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may be delivered from all tribulation, wrath, and necessity, and let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Remembrance our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. For unto thee is due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Oh, Lord. 
Vaki Miramos Padupa Molinsio, Zasta Beats Pussy, Pabilo, Isabrinoj, Boja Toyo, Bagadal Chigu, Presbyteu, Purchase Tu, Propagasa Vendi, Sophio, Pudisunash, Bogorod, Su President, Maria, Sassemi Sati, Pabilo, Shesam Sipia, Ududruga, Vesha Bodas, Christian Boga Predini. For a good God, who lovest mankind, thou, and unto thee do we send up glory. <laughs> to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever. O Lord, save the pious, and hearken unto us. O Lord, save the pious, and hearken unto us. Reconcile both unto God in one body by the 
of the Holy Apostle and Evangelist, Luke. May God, through the intercessions of the Holy Glorious, all praised Apostle and Evangelist, Luke, give speech with great power unto thee that bringest the good tidings, unto the fulfillment of the gospel of his beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Wisdom, all right, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be unto all. is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Let us attend. At that time, Jesus arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time, and wore no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he brake the bands, and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? He said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him, and they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain, and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done, and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. They also which saw it told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear, and he went up into the ship and returned back again. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and show what great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done unto him. Peace be unto thee that bringest the good tidings. Let us 
us all say with our whole soul and with our whole mind, let us say. Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers, we pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great mercy, we pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Again, we pray for our great Lord and Father, the most holy Patriarch Kirill, and for our Lord, the very most reverend Metropolitan Hilarion, first hierarch of the Russian Church abroad, and for all our brethren in Christ. Again, we pray for this land, its authorities, and armed forces, and for all who with faith and piety dwell therein and for the God-preserved Russian land and its Orthodox people, both in the homeland and in the diaspora, and for their salvation. Again, we pray to, to the Lord our God that he may deliver his people from enemies, visible and invisible, and confirm in us oneness of mind, brotherly love, and piety. Again, we pray for our brethren, the priests, priests, monks, and all our brethren in Christ. Again, we pray for the blessed and ever memorable Holy Orthodox Patriarchs, for pious kings and right believing queens, and for the founders of this holy temple, and for all our fathers and brethren, gone to the rest before us, and the Orthodox here and everywhere laid to rest. of souls and bodies with compunction and broken hearts, we fall down before thee, and groaning we cry unto thee, heal the sicknesses, heal the passions of the soul and body thy servants, the archpriest John, the archpriest Michael, the archpriest John, the protodeacon Paul, Ksenia, Sevalod, Maria, Maria, Hope, Kosova, Sophia, Hope, Nina, Mary, Lydia, Michael, Mariana, Adrian, Potini, Luke, Ekaterina, Tatiana, Larissa, Matoska, Joanna, Georgia, Alexei, Theodosius, Natalia, Elena, Maria, Dorothy, Larissa, Victoria, Andrew, Nikolai, Andre, and Yelena, and pardon them, for thou art kind hearted, all their transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, and quickly raise them up again from the bed of sickness. We pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Again, we pray for those who are being persecuted for their faith, especially the Christian faithful of Syria and across the Middle East. The Lord God will send down upon them every spiritual weapon to endure their tribulations, and that he will grant that peace which passes all understanding upon the region and throughout the whole world is a foretaste of his heavenly kingdom. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray thee, our Lord and Savior, preserve the Orthodox Church throughout this entire world in unity and right belief, granting her peace and tranquility, love and harmony. Let us all say, Lord, and hearken and have mercy. Again, we pray thee, look down upon thy holy Orthodox Church with compassion and mercy, and preserve her from division and schism, from enmity and disorder. Grant that her unity be not diminished nor shaken, but that thy thrice holy name be ever glorified within her. Let us all say, hearken and have mercy. Thy commandments to love thee, our God, and our neighbor. Make hatred, hostility, offense, wrath, and this billing of blood to cease. That true charity might reign in the hearts of the people of the Ukrainian land. We pray thee, you are a savior. Hearken and have mercy. Lord, 
again we pray for them that bring offerings and do good works in this holy and all venerable temple. For them that minister and them that chant, and for all the people here present who hate thy great and abundant mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. For our merciful God, our God, the love of mankind, and under thee do we set up glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, look down with thy merciful eye upon the sorrow and greatly painful cry of thy children abiding in the Ukrainian land. Deliver thy people from civil strife, make to cease the spilling of blood, and turn back the misfortunes set against them. Lead unto sanctuary those bereft of shelter, feed the hungry, comfort those who weep, and unite the divided. Leave not thine own flock who abide in sorrows on account of their kinsmen to diminish, but rather, as thou art benevolent, give speedy reconciliation, soften the hearts of the unmerciful, and convert them to the knowledge of thee. Grant peace to thy church and to her children, that with one mouth and one heart we may glorify thee, our Lord and Savior, unto the ages of ages. Pray, catechumens, to the Lord. Be faithful for the catechumens. Let us pray that the Lord will have mercy on them, that he will catechize them with the word of truth, that he will reveal unto them the gospel of righteousness, that he will unite them to his holy Catholic and apostolic church. Save them, have mercy on them, help them, and keep them, O God, by thy grace. Ye catechumens, bow your heads to the Lord. That with us they also may glorify thy most honorable and majestic name, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. As many as our catechumens depart, as many as our catechumens depart, as many as our catechumens remain, as many as are the faithful, again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Wisdom. For unto thee art to all honor, glory, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever. And unto ages of ages. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, the good estate of the holy churches of God, the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy temple and for them that with faith, reverence, and the fear of God enter herein, let us pray to the Lord that we may be delivered from all tribulation, wrath, and necessity. Let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Wisdom. Not always being guarded under thy dominion, we may send a glory unto thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages.
Trinity, St. Sergius Lavra, and our Lord, the very most reverend, Alarion, Metropolitan of Eastern America, New York, first hierarch of the Russian Church abroad, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom, always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. His land, his authorities, and armed forces, and all who with faith and piety dwell herein, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom, Always, now, and ever, and unto the ages of ages. The uh, Russian land, the God-preserved Russian land and its Orthodox people, both in the homeland and in the diaspora, the suffering faithful people in the land of the Ukraine, the region of Kosovo and Serbia, in the Holy Land, Iraq, Syria, Egypt, Pakistan, Sudan, all parts of the Middle East and North Africa, and in the devastated land of Haiti, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. 
clergy, the monastics, and the faithful of this parish and the benefactors of this temple. May the Lord God have mercy upon them now and ever and save them unto ages of ages. Yea, she infirm, those who were seven, those who were absent of the fall, the imprisoned, those in mental institutions. May the Lord be the homeless, may the Lord God remember his kingdom always. And all Orthodox Christians, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Priesthoods, priesthoods, sacred diaconates, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Let us ask of the Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. Pardon and remission of our sins and offenses, let us ask of the Lord. Things good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord that we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. A Christian ending to our life, painless, blameless, peaceful, and a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask. Calling to remembrance our most holy, most pure, most blessed, glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another in our life unto Christ our God. Of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine all holy, good, and life giving Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Peace be unto you. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. The doors, the doors, in wisdom let us attend.
stand with fear and let us attend that we may offer the holy oblation in Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks. Son to the Send down thy most holy spirit at the third hour of all thine apostles. Take him not from us, O 
last to the whole cup. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood. Amen. Bless both, Master. Change your life. St. Sergius Lavra, and our Lord, the very most reverend Hilarion Metropolitan of Eastern America and New York, first hierarch of the Russian Church abroad, whom do thou grant unto thy holy churches in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days, rightly dividing the word of thy truth. And, and grant unto us that with one mouth and one heart we may glorify unto him thy most honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. And may the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Having called to remembrance all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the precious gift, sovereign and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. That our God, the lover of mankind, having accepted them upon his holy and most heavenly noetic altar as an odor of spiritual fragrance, will send down upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. That we may be delivered from all tribulation, wrath, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. Pardon and remission of our sins and offenses, let us ask of the Lord. Things good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. A Christian in 
according to our life, painless, blameless, peaceful, and a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask. Having asked for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another in all our life unto Christ our God. And make us worthy, O Master, that with boldness and without condemnation we may dare to call upon thee, the heavenly God as Father, and to say, together with thy most holy and good and life-creating spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Let us attend.
With the fear of God and with faith in love, draw nigh. I believe, O Lord, and I confess that Thou art truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who camest into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Moreover, I believe that this is truly thy most pure body, and this is truly thine own precious blood. Wherefore, I pray thee, have mercy on me, and forgive me my transgressions, and vouchsafe me to partake without condemnation of thy most pure mysteries, unto the remission of my sins, and life everlasting. Amen. Of thy mystical supper, O Son of God, receive me today as a communicant, for I will not speak of the mysteries of thine enemies, nor will I give thee a kiss as to Judas. But like the thief do I confess thee, remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom. Let not the communion of thy most pure mysteries be unto me for judgment or condemnation, O Lord, but unto the healing of soul and body. Amen. I guess I'm going to have left here. We should be going down. We should be, but let's not do it today. Reader William.
Thy people and bless thine unto the ages of ages.
All right, having partaken of the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly, and life-giving, fearful mysteries of Christ, let us worthily give thanks unto the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Having asked that the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us commit ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. For thou art our sanctification, and unto thee do we send up glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, who dost bless them that bless thee and sanctify them that put their trust in thee, save thy people and bless thy inheritance, preserve the fullness of thy church, sanctify them that love the beauty of thy house, like glorify them by the divine power, forsake us not that hope in thee. Give peace to thy world, to thy churches, to the priests, and to all thy people. For every good gift and every perfect gift is my beloved, but now for thee the Father of light. And unto thee, to his set of glory and thanksgiving and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. There was once a famous monastery. It was at the beginning of its fame. And there was a young monk, we will call him John. He was doing pretty well in the monastery. And then something came over him. A powerful thought got a hold of him. It took the form of I need to go home and take care of my mother. Now on the surface, that's a valid reason to do a good work. However, John was already a member of a community with a wall around it. He was under protection. And the thought came again, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here now. And so he laid a plan, packed up his bags, and he snuck out. It's in the afternoon. So the story goes. He went around the back way. And he got near the wall. And he got near the gate. And then he had to make a decision to go through and go out and head back out into the world. Did you hear the scriptures this morning? Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, has destroyed the wall. He's torn down the wall. What is this wall that the scriptures are speaking of? Number one, it's the expulsion from paradise. It's been destroyed. Number two, it's the tyranny of sin. It's been destroyed. Though it claims us some time as baptized believers in Jesus Christ, awaiting the resurrection, we know that sin ultimately will not have triumph over us, God willing. Three, death. Death has been trampled by death. We're the inheritors of the resurrection. And hence, we're able to worship in a temple like this, glorious, beautiful. It's a symbol of what we're waiting for, what we are and what we're about to become. We're bathed in beautiful music. In fact, parenthetically, last night, I must tell you, it was one of those musical moments where you're just shaken and shattered. I had to stop. I was standing over here. I had to let it pass. It was right around where the gospel was. It was so beautiful, it brought tears to my eyes. And I felt ungrateful that I get to be here. We're protected here. And so John has to make a moral decision. 
whether to go outside the walls of the sacred monastery and work out his life. And that leads us to a problem. It's called providence. Providere in Latin, videre, video is the word we get from that, to see forward, to see into the future you realize this is our problem because it's not God's problem because God doesn't have a future and God doesn't have a past and thankfully God has only a present, an eternal present in which futures and pasts are one which just gives us hope because in God's eternal present the dead have a chance to be alive in God's eternal future we, the living, who are fighting moral battles we have a chance to live in union with him and this is where St. Paul directs us, if you will. I'd like to go back to our reading this morning. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And you are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building firmly fits together, growing unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. St. Paul uses the word citizen. I checked the other translations. It's consistent. As you know, Paul is a Roman citizen himself, and he's proud of it. What did citizenship back then, as today, confer on a person? Privileges and rights. We've been given privileges and rights in a kingdom that is not of this world. My God, how, how fortunate we are. It's a blessing to us. And so we now have John, the monk, trying to make this decision. Because you see, providence, when it comes down to us, is not no, it's just in the present. It's moral. It has flexibility about it. It has challenges. It has difficulties. And this is the problem that he's facing. And so it happens. He goes out. He sneaks out the gate. And there, and he got outside, was the elder waiting for him. And the elder said to him, he was horrified, like, oh my gosh, my plan has been disrupted. And the elder said to him, you'll be back, but just hurry back. When the moment comes, hurry back. Whatever you do, hurry back. And John didn't believe this. He thought, oh my gosh. In contemporary language, he thought, oh my gosh, the elder's trying to put a guilt trip on me. He's trying to guilt me into being good. So he took a blessing, and he ran with his knapsack, and he ran, and he ran. And he decided to take a different route than to go home. He's going to take a shortcut. Here comes Providence. And as the story goes, John entered a town in the afternoon. All morning long, this little town had been in turmoil. Because unfortunately, God, had, God forbid, a murder had been committed there. And they were looking for the murderer. And as happens, this is providence again, as happens, this is the frustration of providence. Someone said, that must be him. The stranger, it must be him. And they seized him and they arrested him. And they put him on trial, a quick kangaroo court, another frustration of providence. He was condemned. And as the story goes, they were going to hang him the next morning. And so in the night, as a condemned man, John, the former monk, oh, and by the way, that didn't count well for him either. As you know, that made his reputation very dubious. The story goes, he got on his knees, and he prayed like never before, and he called upon the Theotokos to deliver him to a righteous death. He didn't pray, as the story goes, for saving. He prayed for a righteous death, for ultimate saving. He had already given himself up to the idea that he would be condemned and executed. Providence. That's the situation we have in the Gospel. Jesus Christ shatters the wall of mental illness, of sin, pain, destruction. He goes to a town that no proper Jew goes to, where the Gadarenes live. We don't even know the name of the town in the scriptures. And what happens there? He heals someone that no one will even look at or touch. He also disrupts someone's business, a pig business. He also disrupts those people enough to where they tell him, it's one of the few places in the gospel where they say, please leave. 
We don't want you here. And he says to the healed man who begs to be an apostle, he says, no, stay here and go and tell everybody what has happened to you. He turns him into a local apostle there. In other words, those people told Jesus, get the heck out of here, and he still sends them proof of their salvation in that man, shattering the wall. Providence, unfrustrated. And so in the night, John is praying away and hoping for a miracle. And a miracle comes. And as the story goes, and this is hard to believe, the Theotokos appeared to a man in his sleep. So strongly, it threw him out of the bed. And she said to him, you must repent. You must not let this happen. She came to the murderer. <laughs> yeah. And he got out of the bed. And with trembling and fear and sweating, he went back to the town. You see, he had been planning all evening that he was going to be on the getaway. He was planning an easy life for himself, as criminals would say. He, can be on, he was going to be on the lam and never have to worry about anything after that. He came and presented himself to the sheriff. And as the story goes, pro Providence unfrustrated. He told him, I'm a murderer. Providence unfrustrated. Believe it or not, as the story goes, the town repented. They repented for having made an error of justice, an error of providence, condemning an innocent man. They released John, and they decided not to hang the murderer. I don't know what happened and how justice was carried out of the town. That's another story. John went back to the monastery. He became a sprinter. He got back there. I suspect, suspect some of you know what monastery this is. This is none other than Optina. This is the Optina monastery that we celebrate. This is the eldership that is part of our tradition. We are blessed. And wouldn't you have it? Providence. Unfrustrated. He knocked on the gate, begging to be let back in. And the story says, the elder came and opened the gate for him and said, I knew you'd be back. And John fell in front of him and said, how did you know? Providence, unfrustrated. Clairvoyance is a gift that God gives the church so that we can stay on providence. We can stay on God's providence and not on Satan's plans. John repented. And the elder said, welcome home. The story goes, John never left that monastery ever again. The story goes that John died a righteous death of a monk in his bed. And when the other monks were going through his things and preparing his room to be turned over to another monk, they found a journal. And in that journal is the story I have just revealed to you now. He kept it secret his whole life. And that story was part of the evidence and the papers that would lead to the glorification of Elder Leonid. And that's the elder I'm presenting to you. Providence. Unfrustrated. It's a moral condition. I hope that your faith has been strengthened this morning through the sacred mysteries. I know it has. I believe it in my heart. I hope that hearing the story of John the monk strengthens you for providence. Unfrustrated. And for the life of the resurrection. Amen. Blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Turn this off. Glory to thee, O Christ, God, our hope, glory to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now, and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Turn it off. Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead through the intercessions of his most pure mother, the holy, glorious, and all-praised apostles, of the holy prophet, forerunner and baptist of the Lord John, of our Father among the saints, John, Archbishop.
of our John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, of our Father among the saints, John Archbishop of Shanghai and San Francisco, the Wonder Worker, of the Virgin Martyr Anastasia the Roman, the Venerable Abramius the Recluse, and his niece, Saint Mary of Mesopotamia, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Donna, and of all the saints. Have mercy on us and save us, for he is good and the lover of mankind. Dear brothers and sisters, first the, the joyous announcement is a little bit more sobering. Uh, but first, of course, we welcome Father George Johnson back into our midst. Father George, as many of you know, was the English serving priest here from 1994 until he formed his mission in Beltsville in 2001. He's here to give us a presentation on the development of church life in his community. Uh, we, of course, welcome you. It's a pleasure to can celebrate with you as well. As always, you're welcome. Um, I will respond. Father John, I've known for 20 some years now, I guess it is. And uh, lately, when my eyes are beginning to fall apart, he is responsible for getting the article of assembly, during which we, he is a boon companion as well as a transport expert, for which I'm greatly thankful for that number of years we've been doing that. Thank you. Your pleasant company. <laughs> now for the not so pleasant announcement. Father Alexander unfortunately came into the altar having to deliver news from the DC Metropolitan Police. Um, they were canvassing the neighborhood and were about to start issuing citations and they gave Father Alexander the warning for the parish that we are transgressing some of the parking laws in the area. Um, namely we're probably either blocking driveways or parking too close to fire hydrants and or stop signs. Uh, the police have been very lenient on this point to date, but unfortunately they have to answer to somebody as do all of us, and if we don't start obeying the traffic laws, we are going to be cited. So when you come and park in the neighborhood, I know it's convenient, especially when it's several blocks away is the next parking space, but please, let's obey the traffic and parking laws so that we don't have anybody cited or towed. Um, this coming Tuesday, Metropolitan Jonah will continue his classes on Orthodoxy at 7.30 p.m. in the parish library. Um, this coming Thursday at 10 a.m. we have another Prosphora baking session. I know you all hear this every few weeks, but a reminder that we go through several hundred of these each and every week, and volunteers are very much needed. This is a communal effort um, in a parish this size. It needs to be, otherwise it will not get done. So if you are able to come for a part of the day or the entire day, your help would be greatly appreciated. Again, that will be this Thursday, November the 15th at 10 a.m. This coming Sunday, November the 18th, after the Slavonic Liturgy, we will serve up on Ihida on the occasion of the ninth anniversary of the martyrdom of Father Daniel Sosoyev. I was a bit surprised that it's been nine years already. And after the Russian luncheon, we will offer a short seminar dedicated to his memory as well. His Matushka and widow Yulia will be present and will make a presentation at that point. Um, also, Father Daniel Sosoyev's publisher, Sergei Stanilovsky, will speak on Father Daniel's writings as well. Hopefully a translation or an interpretation will be made available for those who don't understand Russian. 
Again, that will be next Sunday, November the 18th, following the Slavonic Liturgy. For those of you who have received Holy Communion, please do remain in church for the reading of the post-communion prayers. And of course, we will have our meal next door following all of this as well.
from the heavens hast thou received divine grace, by thy lips thou dost teach all to worship the one God of Trinity, O John Chrysostom, O blessed righteous one, where let me claim thee, for thou art a true revealing things divine, both now and ever since the ages of ages, amen. O protection of Christians that cannot be put to shame, O mediation for the Creator unfailing, this day not the suffering voices of the Spirit, for be thou quick, O good one, to help us who in faith cry unto thee. Hasten to intercession, speed thou to make supplication, that who dost ever protect with thee, O to them that honor thee. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. More honorable than cherubim, more worth than compared to cherubim, without corruption, give us mercy, God the word. The very spirit of the Lord, we magnify the glory of the Father. Son of the Holy Spirit, will now and ever be in the pages of that. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Father, bless. Making the Lord and the Son of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Glory of all praise the Father of our Father, the Holy Father, and Father of all praise. Have mercy on us and save us from the Lord of the Lord. Amen.
servers too. 